For some reason, that first step every day was very difficult. No breakfast, and I like it after 10 kilometers. Probably the most intense experience and most holistic. Hi, we are Eric and Ricky. We not only walk Camino de Santiago, but we also help others in the preparation and ask them important questions. Today we'll ask, what was your daily routine that helped you finish the Camino de Santiago? My name is Maria Gandarillas. I live in Miami, Florida, and I just finished the Frances from Villafranca del Bierzo to Santiago de Compostela. And I will be 60 in 20 something days. So my name is Jose. I'm 27 years old. I come from Mexico and I just finished the French way. Uh, I'm Tiago, I'm 42 years old and I just finished the Camino Central Portuguese. Uh, I'm Tony, um, I'm from China. I live in the UK, I'm a student. I just graduated from my postgraduate program. Um, I started in Beagle three or four days ago and just finished uh, just now. Uh, my name is Matt, I'm from Czech Republic and I'm 19 years old, this was my first Camino, and I did the northern route from Bilbao, and then I switched to Primitivo in Oviedo, and then finished in Finisterra. How many days it took you? It took me 30 days. Uh, William Quinn, I'm from the USA, California, Orange County, Huntington Beach. I'm Jackie Quinn, I'm uh, 51 years old. I'm from Huntington Beach, born in El Salvador. Um, and we just watched the French. Um, my name is Mark. I'm 27 years old. I'm from Germany, Ham Hamburg in the north. Um, I did the Camino Primitivo. It's my third Camino. Um, last year I did the Camino Frances. What was your daily routine? Like what time did you wake up? What did you eat? I woke up at 4, 4, 4.30 and tried to get out the door and I was never out by before 7.30. <laughs> I don't know why it took so long to get out. I wore, they got to a point where I wore the same thing every day. That's the easiest thing, wear the same thing every day. I didn't find cafe con leche in the morning. So what I did is at night, I filled this up with cafe con leche and I had it. I had breakfast in bed every day in Camino. <laughs> And it was the hardest part was putting on the boots and getting out the door every day. For some reason, that first step every day was very difficult. Mm -hmm. And it, it was harder than the last step. <laughs> because the last step I just dragged my body. <laughs> so you, you've been living, you, be, you were living in Alberga around 7.30 and then you, how long you've been walking? What? It was maybe 25, like three days of 25 and two days of 10 to 15, and then 25 or 20, and then 15 or 10 to, to give the body a rest. I basically wake up uh, around 6 a.m., 6.30 or 6, uh, and then start around 7. And I was trying to find some food around the way, uh, along, along the way, and then about uh, like maybe walk until past 12. I was trying to find some place for lunch and then have a, a, a beer or have a, a little relax and then go forward. For the first two days, I walked over 30 kilometers and, and for the rest two days, like yesterday and today, I only worked like 20 and 16 today maybe. I just have a lot more relaxed today. Um, yeah, I think if you want to like catch up with schedule, you need to walk more. But uh, I think the best number is 20, around 20. Mm -hmm. Then you have like a, a very good uh, snap when you get to the Albeck. How was your daily routine on the Camino de Santiago? So usually I'm a guy of routines, but I think the Camino is also about breaking a little bit that. I had an alarm at six, but I, woke up before because people were someday at four already making noise. You could have someone that woke up at 5.30, right? So, I don't know, I start waking up and maybe someday I start my walk at 5.30 because there was this super early guy that I couldn't make sleep anymore. 
sometimes I go to the bathroom, you know, before. Sometimes I had breakfast because I wanted to, or because I bought something in the supermarket before. Other days I didn't, right? Some days I started with the headlamp because it was dark. Other days it was like, oh, it's already 6.40, you know, which was a little late for me. Um, the only thing that I did repeat all, every single day, you know, like, it's like pick up my stuff, put it in my bag, um, put the zipper on, you know, that good sensation, grab my poles and just start walking, right? But other things, they could just uh, be different each day. Like what time? Do you wake up and what do you do during the day and, and after you finish? Mm -hmm. Like it took like two, three days to get into the routine. And after the third day, it just went more or less that routine. So wake up at around five, between five and six. Just naturally, you, you wake up and you just want to go. So you pack your stuff, um, have some breakfast, some coffee, eat something and start walking and then some breaks and be in the municipal alberg before one. So we would do like between 15 to 20 kilometers a day. There was just one day that I made 24, other 28. Other days were between 15 and 20. And then the rest of the afternoon, just wash your clothes, have some shower, rest, eat, socialize a bit, rest, eat, sleep and next day back on track <laughs> okay easy life right simple yeah life. easy simple life yeah my daily routine in Primitivo was like um, I stay up at 7 7 30 sometimes um, pack my backpack and my stuff cleaning my teeth and no breakfast and I like it after 10 kilometers if it's like maybe 10 a.m. You walk 10 kilometers, you feel great, you are in the flow. Now you deserve your breakfast. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes una cerveza <laughs> in the morning. Um, yeah, and I did like 25, 30 kilometers per day. Um, so I have enough time now for the Pimitivo, but I felt like, okay, this is a good, good pace and good distance to, to walk for me. And um, yeah, also my friends, which I met there, did the same, uh, had the same pace, but yeah. Um, I think this Primitivo, this Camino was like more 50-50, walking alone and walking with, with friends. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important also to walk alone, to handle the loneliness, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Maybe listen to yourself also. And listen to yourself, yeah, listen to your body and um, get new aspects of your life and I thought a lot about who am I and what is important and there are so many many different aspects to answer these questions but for me at the end it's um, to be happy strong and healthy I think every mother on the earth doesn't matter from Poland Germany Russia Ukraine USA Africa every mother one that their ch children are happy strong and healthy um, yeah and who am I? I only know that I'm here and now, <laughs> and I think that's important. How is your daily routine on Camino de Santiago? What did, how did you wake up? What did you eat? Where did you rest? It depends like if I was in the group or alone and how many kilometers I had in the day. If I had like short day, I didn't set up an alarm. I woke up around like 7, 7.30 had small breakfast, started walking, had second breakfast of like five kilometers somewhere, arrived to the albergue, had some lunch, had shower, and then talked to people, then went to bed in the evening. When I was in a group, we cooked together. It was amazing. So the night before, we pre-pack our bag, okay? <laughs> And if it's a 4 a.m. wake up call, we're sleeping in our um, hiking clothes. Sleeping in this. Yeah. Um, but it's walk, um, lunch, breakfast, lunch, yeah. laundry, yeah. shower, yeah. and sit, sleep. And sit and, um, and talk with friends and people yeah. we've met. But something that we always do to close out the day, we always ask ourselves what was our high and what was our low?
you know, and it's always for us being married, it's always interesting, like what his high and his low would be compared to mine. Um, but yeah. that usually will summarize our day and get us refocused to start the next yeah. day. And we'll ask each other, like, what was your best memory for the day yeah. in this moment? Yeah. Once walking, I didn't, I didn't like the schedule too. I, oh, I have to get here because I have a reservation. That wasn't the way to, to make the Camino for me. Um, I did was, people were asking, right? Like, where are you going today or the day before? And I was like, I don't know, we'll see. You know that, so it was what, whatever was coming up. I, I did like that magic, you know, of things uh, unexpected, you know, um, you know, back at my previous work, like lots of decision making, lots of routine, waking up at the same time every day, you know, and having on, on your schedule the, some time to eat, even though I didn't have that rigid of a job. I, I, it was pretty flexible, actually. But my, even if the job was flexible, I'm a, I can be rigid sometimes. And I like routine, which is not bad at all. But I think in this kind of experience for me, it truly was a, a positive thing to do, to just uh, let things on their own, uh, not, not try to let, let go of so much control, right? Because you don't get to do that so much. Uh, usually you plan a, a vacation or a trip. And that's a whole different thing to me. Like, the Camino allows you to let go of that and just, uh, yeah, maybe you are right to a town you thought you, like one hour ago you were going to sleep there, which wasn't the plan, but one hour ago it was the plan. And you're like, ah, I'm not feeling it. I'm going to keep on walking. And yet, it, it was to me the, the main thing about connecting with that intuition. And once I arrived to the next place, I, I was always trying to confirm like, my intuition is amazing because this place is amazing, you know? And, I try always to validate that, but I think it's a good thing. Like, I, it did get me to interesting places, interesting people for sure, to just uh, hear my intuition each day and go with that flow of the moment and not uh, a schedule or a routine maybe. When I was alone, I had some instant noodles for dinner. It was nice, but, and when I, walked like 30, 35 kilometers a day. I started early, around like 5 p.m. Uh, a.m. So that I would have early start without people, with my music. And then basically the same, first breakfast, second breakfast. Yeah, what do you do when you get to Alberga? Uh, have a sleep first, or oh, I take shower, have a sleep. That's a very important too. And uh, I, I like to walk around the village. Um, I have some reading as well, and not just Bible, I also have a, another book, so... And also trying to reply some message, trying to stay, with, stay in touch with people. Yeah. When you arrive to Alberga, when you arrive to the end of the day, what do you do? What, is, what happens in Alberga? Uh, yeah. Then I'm very grateful to take a shower. <laughs> A warm shower it could be so amazing. It's not like a shower at home after work or in the morning. Now it's like <sighs> you release something and you feel clean. And I wash my clothes and if everything and I do my bed. And with this finished, I go to a restaurant or a bar, take one beer, enjoy the evening. Yeah. Hearing those inspiring stories, you might be feeling motivated to start your Camino journey. Before you embark, consider joining us on a special retreat designed to prepare you both physically and mentally. Our retreat offers personal guidance, expert advice and a supportive community to ensure you're ready for adventure ahead. Sign up to secure your spot and start your Camino with confidence. Click the link below to learn more and register for our pre-Camino retreat. Don't miss this opportunity to make your Camino experience truly unforgettable.